Hello, this is Dave Reynolds presenting an instant access article for the Journal of Vascular and Interventional Radiology. Today we'll be discussing percutaneous creation of an arteriovenous fistula for hemodialysis axis by Diraj Rajan and his colleagues, published in the Journal of Vascular and Interventional Radiology in April 2015. This study investigated the feasibility of creating AV fistula for dialysis using a percutaneous system. This was a non-randomized prospective trial that took place in Paraguay under IRB supervision. 33 patients were enrolled over a 13-month period, and the study measured technical success, adverse events, and time to AVF maturity. Primary endpoints for this study were successful creation of a patent AVF between an upper extremity artery and vein, maturation of the superficial vein suitable enough for hemodialysis access to be used on a monthly basis, and occurrence of adverse events which were assessed by either angiography or clinical assessment. The secondary endpoints were successful hemodialysis achieved for at least 75% of the sessions over a one-month period, and this is a standardized measure used in assessing hemodialysis fistulas. The patients received intravenous sedation and local anesthesia. The upper arm was accessed first in the brachial vein using an over-the-wire seven French sheath then the brachial artery was accessed using a six French sheath. Catheters were advanced over a wire down the artery and vein into the ulnar artery in the upper forearm. There were small magnets attached to the catheters. And then when they were side by side in the ulnar artery and vein, this brought the walls of the vessels in apposition to one another. An RF cutting current was then applied for one second, which instantly cut and cauterized the vessels, leaving a fistula. The system was then removed, and then the brachial vein in the upper arm was coil embolized. Here we see a post-procedure angiogram via an ulnar artery injection, demonstrating early filling of the cephalic vein indicated by the white star. We see the white arrow indicating the AV fistula between the ulnar artery with the white arrowhead and the ulnar vein with the black arrow. 61 patients were initially screened for inclusion in this study. 33 patients met the exclusion criteria and underwent an attempted AVF creation. AVF creation was successful in 32 out of the 33 patients. Four patients did die during the follow-up period from causes unrelated to the procedure. One patient was lost to follow-up. Of the remaining 27 patients, 24 were undergoing successful dialysis via their, their percutaneous AVFs six months later. Two additional patients had usable access but did not initiate dialysis during the study. One spontaneous percutaneous AVF thrombosis did occur in a patient with pre-existing central vein stenosis. Cumulative AVF patency at six months was 96%. Mean time to AVF maturation was 58 days with a range of 37 to 168 days. There was one serious procedure-related adverse event and five minor procedure-related adverse events. The authors conclude that although larger studies are required to validate efficacy in a wide range of patients, this study does demonstrate hemodialysis access can be successfully created with an endovascular catheter-based system, and patency of the AVFs and time to maturation were superior to published results of surgical techniques.